So, thanks for sticking around and, and thanks for watching the movie. Answering questions. Or, am, I, am I on my own here? <laughs> Is it not a moderator or anything? Let me get rid of this mic stand and free it up a bit. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. It varies. I, I'm not. I, some of it, I was literally lying under the actors or, or lying under Olivia, and I always like to be in the room all the time. I think. I think it's just a, it makes it a bit more involved, and I can't help it. I, I find I find actors quite engrossing, you know. And I, and I so I I'm sort of you know wanted to be pretty present. So I wasn't you know hundred yards away from smoking a cigar. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll have to be sort of a mum's level, really. Um, Hannah's fearless. She's fearless when he comes in the store. Um, well, yeah, I don't really kind of want to give too much away about it, but yeah, there's, um, it's almost like when she's in that place, like as humans, we all have different sort of faces, you know, different relationships we have with people. And because she's being so, so oppressed at home, it's like within that space, she can become somebody else. Um, and her, her fate sort of galvanizes her in, within that place. And I, I know a woman who had experiences in a, in a charity shop, and she'd have drunk people coming in raging at her. And she just told me that um, she was always terrified inside, but she'd just keep this calm front and pray for them. And a lot of times they'd come back the following day and apologize, you know, when they were sober. So that's sort of where that idea came from, that she can be strong in there, you know, within that place, it's her temple, if you like. I think so, yeah, because we don't see it really in, um, in cinema back home a lot, it's either sort of one or the other, and British cinema is sort of either, you know, in the, in the sort of uh, working classes, or it's middle or, you know, you grew up with royalty, usually, and I just think, I think part of it is, it, to, to answer your question, I think part of it's about, just the presumptions we make about people and, and what we um, presume about other people and their, and their lives and the lives that they're living. When in actual fact, we have no idea what people are, are, are living with at all. Um, so it's just sort of playing with that idea of it. Because um, Joseph makes very sort of wild assumptions about her. Um, so it's just sort of um, playing with that idea. Anyone else? Bring it out to yeah. quick. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm kind of new to the scene, but like, uh... Um, yeah. Keep the water and let it be a problem. Pull it up away. What would you say the overall synopsis of the Oh, Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, synopsis, man. They pay someone to do that. <laughs> Get sight and sound in October and they'll give you a synopsis. <laughs> What to say? I don't, I don't quite know what you mean. The synopsis of it. I mean, you've just seen it. <laughs> <laughs> you really aren't used to this thing. Can you talk a little about about the origin of the story for you as a writer? Yeah, <laughs> and the dedication. Oh, the dedication is to my mother, and um, that's just you know she gave birth to me, man. <laughs> 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 Most of our life. Um, so, sorry, what was the other thing the about? The origin of the story for you as a writer. Yeah, I, I'm going to nick a quote from Peter in saying that it's it's sort of not my, it's personal, but it's not my life, you know, but there's, oh, there's aspects in there. Um, well, the whole feature came from a short that we made called Doggle Together. And, um, you know, we did, the film did okay in terms of, you know, we got some awards and things, and it was pretty well received, so um, people started to sort of, um, because the film sort of ended where Peter was outside the charity shop, people were asking questions about what happens to the characters next, and I'd already written a short about Olivia's character, and I just thought, well, you know, that's a pretty good place to carry on, is to, to, to sort of carry on with these characters and see where the story goes. It's hard to say, if I'm honest, that I'm not great at... Um, uh, references and things, but I, you sort of write a film and there's all these characters in it, and I suppose 
at the end of the day, you've, because you've written it and it's personal, you've sort of written a film about yourself. And, um, and there's a, a lot about my relationships with my parents and my parents' relationships with each other and all of those things are in there. Um, but it's not autobiographical. And um, I guess it was just a bit of, uh, what would I say, a bit of purging going on? I don't know, but it, <laughs> it came out the way it came out. I don't know. When I wrote it, it just it was like years of stuff built up and it just spewed out into what became the script of Tyrannosaur. And some things that uh, would be too specific for me to reveal, you know, but um, it was just stuff that I needed to get off my chest, so, you know. <laughs> Two goldfish. <laughs> We're getting a dog in four weeks. No, in actual fact, I mean, you know, my dad, um, we, we had a dog, and he had a dog called Bluey, and it went everywhere with him. And when Bluey got sick, I mean, he never kicked it. But actually, this was in the short, didn't make the feature film. He, um, he actually put the dog down himself, you know, and buried him in the garden. And um, I, to me, it was, I thought it was quite poetic. I thought it was like a, a cowboy and his horse, you know. Um, but um, no, he never, he never kicked the dog. But we've got two goldfish. You like that real character? <laughs> <laughs> Who, Pisa? Yeah. Sorry, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you playing? <laughs> no, no, I'm not like him in the slightest. I've never kicked a dog in my life. <laughs> no, thankfully not. No. I can honestly say. And to be, I must confess, I must be absolutely honest, um, I don't really go, I don't do any preparation to be absolutely honest. Um, it's, if, if, if you can connect with, with someone's kind of soul, if you like, then personally, I think as an actor, then you go with that and anything that comes of that, fine. I mean, obviously, a scripted, very angry, angry human being. Um, I was very happy to just be him for the three minutes that it would take to do a scene and then go, bye. <laughs> and that guy would give you a serious fucking headache. Um, and you said they wouldn't want to take him home. That's what I'm sure. Right, so let's, let's, let's do the same question over to Olivia. Like this, if it's 
if you, I think you're invested in the characters, I think that you, you feel a sense of sort of danger in a way, and I think you commit more. Um, so there's a few gas from the audience at certain moments, but, and I hope that because you're invested in, in, the, in the drama of it. I've only really gotten a chance to see your comedic work, and this was really a treat, and I wondered kind of how you, like in Peep Show, and how you feel about an audience getting to see a new side of you, and I mean, I was blown away. You're absolutely terrific. So. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, yes, I, um, I've had most of my work in comedy in England, which I've been strolled with, because it's, it's a lovely way to work. <laughs> Good laugh all day. <laughs> um, and I was, I've always wanted to do something like this. I kind of feel like I dreamt about this film when I was eight. <laughs> and finally, Paddy wrote it. Um, and I'm. I, I'll die happy now having had the chance to do it. So it's something I've always wanted to do, and I'm very pleased that I've had to do it. Sort of just a silly technical question, but how many takes did it take to get that perfect swing on the Jesus photo when you threw oh. it? <laughs> <laughs> what the her, her perfect shot? Yeah. <laughs> I think the, that was the first take. The wide shot, that was her first take. And then there was, there was a, we could put a little gag reel together of misses. <laughs> and then one take when I said, just keep fucking throwing at it, you can miss. And then when it comes to like six videos, and she still had it. I was like, oh, God, God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> that was the first take, I think, on that shot. She nailed it, so she nailed it. That's terrible. <laughs> I'm not Ricky Gervais. I'm not Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Yeah, I had a great DP, Eric Wilson, he's, he's brilliant, and in the last sort of um, 12 months he's really come into his own, and he, sh he also shot Submarine that's in the festival, and that's when I met him, because I, I was in that film, and I just remember sort of seeing him, you know, how he operates himself, and he's there grabbing the lights and pulling them into shot, I thought he's a man kind of fella, you know, he just, just gets involved. Um, and Submarine too, very different to, to Tyrannosaur. Um, but uh, he's just an amazingly talented guy, and, and I think, l like the actors, we just seem to have a really good team, and I had a really good working relationship with Eric, and um, I, there was only a few times in the film that I, I don't like sort of shot lists and things like that, but there was odd moments where I sort of had a specific shot that I knew I wanted, and then there was other times where we'd, we'd set it up and he'd show me a frame, and I think probably four or five times in the entire four-week shoot, I said, oh, Let's move it a bit. I adjusted it that, that many times. You know, he was that good, and uh, I, I've got a lot to thank him for. Um, and we work great together, and hopefully, we'll just keep working in the future. But he's certainly a very, very important guy. Aesthetically, I just didn't want sort of handheld camera knocking about all over the place. You know, I think it's been bastardised now, and I've had enough of it. <laughs> so, oh man. Aspect ratio and some, you know, frame shots, nice and stuff.